Peri peri chicken, the sauce. No, Portuguese chicken. Peri peri chicken. Peri peri. Peri peri. I won't start that actually. I'll get, I'll get infatuated with soda. Anyway, Portuguese chicken. Another, another one of everyone's favourite takeaways I'm, I'm having a stab at. And I know they're all starting to open up now, unless not, I'll just rush back. Still a bit of cooking, still peeps. So, beautiful week this week in England. In fact, it's uh, now only 11 o'clock. I've already been for a big run. It's been 20 it was 20 degrees at like 9 o'clock this morning, and it's never that. It's never that any time of the day. It might early in the morning. So, perfect barbecue weather. So, I'm having a barbecue tomorrow. So, I'm going to start this chicken today because it's a 24 hour marinade process. You can get away with doing it in about an hour, but it'll be rubbish. And it'll be your fault, as I've just told you. So, marinade is the key to success, unless it's not. Anyway, so. Going to marinate the chicken in a, peri a very simple sort of Portuguese flavours and I'm going to make an authentic, well, at least if anything's authentic, but I'm going to make an authentic sauce, what I think is authentic and actually try them. Um, like we all know Nando's, uh, I think there's a couple other different ones, there's Portuguese chickens in Australia, a couple of companies, I forget the names of, doesn't matter, get myself in trouble saying names anyway, but they're delicious. Uh, it's actually, you know what, Nando's one of my favourite takeaway and I get a big debate whether it's a takeaway or not. I don't give a shit what you all think, it's takeaway. Just because there's bloody seats in it, I get this off you all the time, especially in England. Oh, it's got a restaurant, it's not takeaway. It's a Macca's, it's a McDonald's is a restaurant, is it? No, no it's not. Fucking takeaway, weirdos. Anyway, I digress. That's what I do. So, chickens. You've heard me before. Look at this, organic, free range chicken means I'm not a twat right well I am but not because of that so I've redeemed myself a little bit with that so we're good um, so I'm gonna marinate that the chicken in olive oil chili flakes garlic paprika and oregano and a bit of lime so nuts and bolts of perinades or Portuguese we're talking lime we're talking paprika we're talking oregano these are the things that make it Portuguese chicken right uh, the peri peri sauce, it's a little bit more convoluted. It's quite a tricky one, I'm not gonna lie. It's not, I wouldn't say tricky, it's just got a bit going on. So we're using onions. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> using onions, we're using garlic. Um, we're gonna char grill the shit out of them with roasted red peppers. So they've all got this flamey char grill flavor. Then we're gonna reduce that down with some vinegar. Um, and some garlic, well garlic's already in there, some more oregano, paprika, a bit of allspice. I'll give you the full recipe, so don't sit there trying to jot that down and go, what's crazy man babbling? No, I'll write it up for you and I'll, and I'll send you a photo in just a second. Um, so once we've done that, we'll blend it, then we're gonna make an emulsification with out of oil. So basically that's the basis, get it blended, forget your fancy emulsification work, we're just gonna add oil until it thickens. Happy days. Um, that sauce, would be the most amazing marinade also. Uh, and in fact, a lot of places probably marinate their chicken in their perinade sauce or peri-peri sauce or whatever it is. Um, I don't, um, because it seems a bit lavish. It's a lot of work in that sauce and the flavors are gonna impart good. Then what I'll do is once we're char grilling it, so a couple of steps of this, I'll marinate the chicken for 24 hours, then I'll slowly start cooking it in an oven if I was sous vide, it probably if I was fancy, I'm not going to, I'm gonna use an oven this week. I'm gonna put it in an oven, let it start cooking, and then when it's pretty much cooked, so we've got almost completely cooked chicken, I'd like a little bit of give in there so we don't overcook it. Then we're gonna char grill it on a barbecue. We've actually got a post box barbecue. Friends of mine, the only barbecue I've got access to. So friends of mine, they've turned an old post box into a barbecue, so you'll see that. It's amazing, bit of ingenuity. Um, anyway, and as I'm char grilling that, I'm gonna baste it with the sauce. And that sauce has got a little bit of sugar in too, and it's just gonna help it go all sticky and lovely. So once again, happy days. All right, so, I'm gonna crack on with Barrett cutting up the chicken. Oh, hang on, I'll get there, actually, I'll get there. Um, so, let me sort my thing out, I should've done that before I got started. Yeah, that's better. Ah, uh, anyway, chicken. You can do it a few ways, uh, and I'll show you how I'm doing it. Actually, I'll show you when I got the chicken. Meat on the job board. Now, chickens. <coughs> Beyond getting the right chicken, which 
can't state clearly enough, go get yourself free range chickens. You just shouldn't be eating non free range chickens. It's just, I don't know why they're still around. If I had my way, they wouldn't be. So please stop. Uh, I find a little secret. I often get organic and free range chickens quite cheap in my shops because most of, I better call you ignorant bastards. Most of you ignorant bastards don't think it's worth buying so that they end up going on specially in the shops. So like it's, um, it's good. Good for me, bad for you all ignorant bastards and um, um, don't buy the old chickens. Okay, <laughs> so quite often Portuguese chickens when they're barbecued are spatchcocked. And to spatchcock something, to spatchcock anything, a lot of people think spatchcock's an actual kind of chicken. It is in Australia, I think we call a spatchcock a small chicken, but they're not. To spatchcock something is to splay it open. Um, so, what we need to do for that is to take the backbone out. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm not gonna leave it in that position for me today because then it's great and it looks fantastic, but what happens is you then have to cut it up again when you wanna serve it to someone. I don't wanna do a double handling, so I'm just gonna cut up into pieces. So, Put your knife in the back of the um, the back of the chicken. You've got a backbone which goes straight down here. Well, you should have a backbone. If you don't buy free range chickens, you probably haven't got a backbone. Yeah, take that. Take that, peeps. Anyway, I'm gonna cut this backbone out. And how we do that is, that knife is, slot your knife inside and you can sort of, you know where the backbone is because it's got a big ridge on it. So go one side of the ridge and just cut through. If the cut's too hard, you're probably not in the right spot, and then go to the other side of the backbone. Give a good chomp. There we go. And when you see, you can see you've got the backbone in your hand here. So I'll just pull in the backbone so I can just gauge where it is. There we go, and I've got the backbone. I mean, now I'm about to chuck that in your chicken stock, which I will actually, it'll be amazing. So, chuck that chicken stock, there we go. So, and all you've got to do for the spatchcock is sort of just break, uh, break, break the backbone. Give it a bit of a splay down. And that's about it. Just give it a good crack of your hands. I've already tucked the wings out, so the wings are out like that. You can tuck them in like that. They give it a good leg. Some people like to chop these bits off. In fact, I probably will chop off the, the top knuckle because uh, I don't want that. Right. And then that's a spatchcock chicken. So. That's all good, and you can get nice cool cages, and you can put it in a cage, and you can barbecue so bits don't fall off. That's all well and good. All right, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do a few things here. One, I'm gonna chop straight through the uh, breastplate here. Let me just chop through there. So I've got two half chickens, that's no problem at all. I'm gonna go even further. I'm gonna go even further. Um, how am I gonna do this? All right, I'm gonna go into quarters. So take, your, take your Mary, that's called a Maryland. So that's just like your, your thigh and your leg. And then you've got this whole piece here. We want lots of bones kept on because um, it really helps with flavor getting imparted and it helps with uh, moisture when you're barbecuing and stuff like that. So, got some lovely pieces there. Let me just cut this other piece in half. We're then going to score it a little bit today and not go, oh, that's a nice chicken. I'll give it eight out of 10. I mean, that's obviously, fine and fun and keeps the kids entertained for at least 10 seconds. But no, it's not what I mean. Let me just cut off this uh, bit of backbone here. It's not backbone, it's chest plate. It's making up words for you. Hoping no one's actually listening. And by this point in the video, I mean, give me a comment if you still are listening. Because I like to think no one watches these videos. So if you've got to this point in the video and you're still listening, give us the heads up. Right, so I can know you're not just like, yeah, he's made Nando's, off he goes. So, I've got my bits of chicken like that. I'm even gonna go further. Uh, I'm probably gonna take the leg off, so I've got a nice thigh. There we go, so do that. So I've shown you that before, when I've cut up the chicken, there's a nice leg. If it's a hard cut, you're cutting in the wrong spot. It's as simple as that, they're nice and easy. There we go. Here, they're two nice bits for me, so I'm gonna go straight down the middle of the breast, and someone, hopefully me, is gonna get that piece because it's got a wing and the top of the breast. By far the best piece of chicken, right? So by far the wing piece because it's got the wing and it's got that, it's great. If I was, oh, and see these are the thighs. 
Um, if I was spatchcocking it, I'd probably score it. I might not score this actually. And by scoring, I mean giving it a few slits to get the marinade in. But because we've opened it up here, it's all gonna get in there nice and good. So there we go, there's one. I'm gonna do that with another chicken. So, because I'm doing two worths of chicken, I mean, there's an obvious statement. And then we'll get marinated and I'll come back to you. But there you go. There's a sauce bit. Now, sauce bit is quite an interesting sauce. It's quite a cool sauce to make. Like everything I've shown you is pretty cool. I, don't, I wouldn't stand there and make a video of some absolute shit. Go, here you go. Make that. It's a stupid comment, stupid comment. Anyway, for this we want 20 dried red chilies. Now, when recipes say dried red chilies, they mean dried red chilies. They don't think, oh, you know, I've actually got fresh and fresh is better. Fresh isn't always better. Uh, dried gives it a certain robust flavor. It's just, oh, it's just lovely. I love it. It's Thai, it's great. What bloody hair is out of control? Yeah, no, absolutely insane. So, you have to soak your red chili. So I soaked these overnight. These are, really bloody hot tiny ones. Friends of mine bought these in um, Sicily, I believe. It's a nice little thing to do. So when you go on holidays, a bit different in Australia because you can't bring anything back into the bloody country. But everywhere else in the world, you can buy some nice little ingredients from when you travel and it's just so nice. Because when you think, oh, I've made that, it's not from Portugal. I mean, it would have been nice if they'd gone to Portugal and not be some Portuguese chilies, but you know what? Selfish, whatever. Anyway, you better do 20 dried chilies. So that can be different sizes. And I think the peri-peri chilies, I think it's a chili called peri-peri. I just made that up. They're, they're not massive and they're not small. So I've actually got way more than 20 in here because I love chili. The people I'm making this for to eat with, my friends, I do have them, uh, also likes chili. So I've soaked them overnight so they've got nice and rehydrated, brilliant. I've already roasted off some red peppers. I've shown you how to do this in another video. So that's what you have left. You know what? You see there's a little bits of black skin on. I've said that last time. I actually don't mind a little bit of them. I'm not just being lazy. I sort of leave it half hour, so I certainly don't wash them. Um, and that's just tip toppity tip. What's that, I'm gonna say. Um, then red onions and garlic. The red onions and garlic. I've got the old char grill going on over here. I'm gonna char grill them. So obviously you're not gonna char grill the garlic as much as you're gonna char grill the onions. So we're gonna cut them up in a minute and I'll probably put it on time lapse so you can watch it because it's all pretty and shit. So it's really nice. So what we'll do is we'll char grill them. Garlic, that'll get ripped off pretty soon. Onions, they'll get char grilled. Um, then we're gonna whack it all in a pot. And in the pot we're gonna put some lemons and lemon juice. We're gonna put side vinegar, oregano. Now I said oregano is the star of the show. And I think dried oregano is possibly what most people use. I don't have dried oregano. I have fresh oregano. Uh, Cause friends of mine on the estate where I live, grow it. So I went and robbed it off them yesterday. They knew about it, so not so much robbing other than being kindly given. But I prefer the word rob. Okay, so I've got that. So that's gonna give a different dynamic. I don't like dried herbs, but a lot of them sort of work for this sort of shit, so it's fine. Um, then we're gonna go to some bay leaves and shit and whack that in. So we're gonna reduce that, and that makes this really robust, really bloody hot sauce. And the oil's gonna dissipate the heat. And then from that point, you could add it to a bit of mayonnaise and make your perinase, which I think you get a lot of the time. And those do be chips in it. Mm, lovely. But the actual stinking hot shit that's in the bottle, it's not hot, eh? It's hot, see? And now I've been furloughed for over three months, you know, I've given up. Look, look at my beard. Look at my hair. How do you think going for me? Is? I've lost heaps of weight. So we've we'll lost about 10 kilos, peeps. Look at that. No belly anymore, eh? 92 kilos, that's what I am. Anyway, I was 102 at the beginning of furlough. Woo, woo, woo. Right, anyway, that's just all bask in the glory that is me. Huzzah! No, that's enough basking. Anyway, so sauce wise, I've got to go char grill some stuff. So I'm going to do that and then we'll put it all in a pot. I'll give you a list of that too. We'll come back to you. It's like talking, really. There's been no cooking going on. So I'll do a bit of cooking. Lots of talking. Okay, as you saw, the stuff's char grilled, and I've took the, taken the garlic off sooner than I did the onions because burnt garlic tastes like burnt garlic. 
Burnt onions, however, has a different taste. The burned garlic seems to get a little bit bitter. So, don't burn garlic is the key. Anyway, so in this pot, I'm gonna start just whacking a whole bunch of stuff in. So the garlic, I took off like that. So it's got a nice char grill, but it's not completely black smithereens. My roasted red peppers. So there we go, so that's garlic. And I said this was a tricky recipe, it's not. It's just, as a chef, it's just one of those You've got to get the vegetables charred first and stuff. It, it's, it's not hard. I don't know why I said it was hard. So I don't, I don't want to assume for you guys it is. You've got my, my dried chilies here in the water. I don't mind if a bit of the water comes in. So I'm just going to whack them all in there. Remembering you need 20. I've actually probably got about 100 small, uh, at least over 50, and then about 100 now. I don't know, they're tiny. I'm going to say 100 of these tiny chilies. It's going to be, it's going to be bloody hot, that's what it's going to be. <coughs> in fact, the water just made me cough and smell. <coughs> Excuse me. So that goes in there. Then we've got the juice and the zest of two lemons. They go in there too, aren't they? Woo! Um, brown sugar. Let's get some of that going on in there. So I'm using light brown sugar. You could use dark brown sugar. You could probably use palm sugar if you really wanted to. And you just want a tablespoon. So I'm going to real heap tablespoon. Just adds that little bit extra. In fact, I'm going a little bit extra just because I'm doing about one and a half times the recipe, so don't, don't think I'm ignoring my own recipe, as is my want. So that's cool. 120 mils of cider vinegar. So, once again, most vinegars would probably do. I'm trying to say cider vinegar is the only one that would work, but it is the best one for the, uh, for the purpose. And we're just looking for 120 mils, so not too much because the um, It'll be too vinegary. Here we go, 120 mils of that. Into pops. And then we're talking about some uh, organo. So we want a tablespoon. So, so a tablespoon of dried, or you know what, just a good bunch of the, uh, the fresh. Give that a good chop, choppity chop. And this sauce is getting blended, so don't get too too worried about any of the sort of the shapes and the sizes going in there. Um, we'll go get some salt in there, brown sugar, so black pepper. Salt and black pepper. Black pepper, we're talking a teaspoon. Get in there. Salt, we're talking two teaspoons. There we go. Here we go, the stars of the show, really. Paprika. It's a good paprika. This is just, once again, MS. Bloody luck I have that for MS at the moment. But they do good stuff. Get stuff in a tin, you know it's going to be probably a little bit more legit. So we want two, two teaspoons of this. So, in my language, that's at least three of them. I like three. Let's go three te teaspoons of paprika. Really get there going. And here you go. My, my sick my little ingredient. Oh, not anymore. Um, Teaspoon of allspice. I like allspice. It's one of those mixtures of spices that's already done for you. It's not all the spices, it's lime, okay? It's a few spices. I think it's five spices. And I know there's also, that's probably why they called it allspice, because there was already something called five spice. Must have been hard when they were naming spices. So, anyway, so in there we've got our dried chilies, we've got our roasted red peppers, we've got the onions coming in a second, because what I've done is I've turned the char grill off and I've let them sit on there. Helps them cook and collapse a little bit more. They're going to go in here. I've got to go get some bay leaves, which I forgot to get from outside. So I'm going to go grab two bay leaves off the thing. That's it. I mean, that's all going to go in. Stir it all up. That's what it looks like in there. And that's going to get in there on the stove. I'm just going to reduce it till it's a third. It's all about liquid. Then I'm going to blend it. And then we're going to start adding chili back in, uh, oil back in to make an emulsification, okay? So onions in here, bay leaf on the stove. Reduce it by a third and I'll come back to you. Well, the chicken part, the marinade. Once again, no stupid cards that you probably hate. They're for me, because when I'm trying to find my videos, it's a nightmare. This part's not hard at all, so I'm just, gonna, just not even going to mess around. Here we go. Chili flakes. Love chili flakes. Love chili. Every single kind of chili is different. So if I say chili flakes, you say real chili. I say chili. You say chili flakes. No. Use what I say I use, because it makes a big deal. All right, so here we go. Go. Tailspoon and a half. 
think my recipe calls for two teaspoons, but I don't care. Tablespoon and a half. Garlic cloves, four of them. Oregano, that much. Get in there. Salt. Yes, please. Salt, half a teaspoon. <laughs> Whoa, more than that. Get in there. Two limes. So, you go, do a bit of education. Use the citrus, always give them a good roll. A couple of things, or at least the oils on the outside, which is uh, nice if you want to get some flavours going there and it makes your hands smell nice, which is lovely. Also loosens and breaks all the fibres inside. So you're gonna get more juice out of it. So then when you cut them in half, so I want, yeah, I want the zest in there. I'm gonna zest these first, so. Zesty Bojangles. Just get the zest straight in there. And zest. Zest has a lot more, so zest the lemon, zest the limes. It's the builder flavour, so when you want things to be exceptional, not just normal, that's when you've got lemon juice and lemon zest. They both had a different dynamic of the citrus into it. Uh, so it's nice to have both in there. The zest has a lot more longer lasting sort of flavour, and the juice is obviously a little bit more vibrant and, and gives the liquid, liquid part of it. The zest of them. Cut them in half. Give it a bit of a juice. All right, so that's it. Then we're gonna have, um, so we've got that. Gonna put some olive oil in here uh, and some paprika. And we're pretty much there. And I'm just gonna blend it up quickly so that once I've cut up the chicken, you just wipe this around it. And then marinate it for 24 hours. And we're pretty much there. So there we go, it goes in there. That's all that. Then paprika, wherever the hell I put that. Here we are. And we're talking uh, two teaspoons of paprika. Once again, it's a good smoked paprika. There we go, two teaspoons of that. Happy days, blendy blendy, marinade chicken. See, this is what this beautiful stuff looks like. It just looks good, doesn't it? It looks authentic and colorful. It still looks like a cooked gaspacho, doesn't it? Which that is an oxymoron if ever I heard one. But anyway, look at that. All the goodness, liquid getting in. Mm. So when I say reduce by third, there's not much liquid to start with. So you're almost going to look at getting rid of most of that liquid. So when it blends up, it's going to be quite a thick paste anyway. And that those bay leaves will be imparting lots of flavour. I think I've said before, people think bay leaves are like a fallacy. Oh, I'll put a bay leaf in. It's like the magic rock in the magic rock and soup story. No, no, they, they give flavour, peeps. They give flavour. Don't turn on the bay leaf. Why are you all against it? Anyway, so that can probably come down a little bit in the old heat scale of things. Here we go, and we're all good. Okay, so chicken's all chopped up. This is just a Perinade's marinade, or the Peri Peri marinade I got. So you can see it's got a beautiful color, um, just lovely. So this is what I like called a basic marinade really. So like this hasn't had to um, have all the work done, so it's really good. Give it a good mix up of your hands, get really interested in each other. Hello. Marinade's just a word for a food party, isn't it? Everyone, you know, getting lathered up. Bit of moisture always helps everyone get to know each other. Way, whether I actually meant drinks, but every single aspect of that works on every level, whichever euphemism you want. Um, here we go, so in like that. Um, as I said, sous vide and these would be lovely. If you've got your chefy and you've got your stuff, whack these in a bag and sous vide them uh, a couple of hours at 70 degrees. Uh, and then you can chuck them on a barbecue, that'd be a nice, neat and pretty way to do it. Me, I'm just going to do that, wrap it overnight, uh, and then tomorrow put on some uh, racks in the oven, make sure it's got all that marinade on and start, it, start the cooking process. It'll be lovely. Um, I mean, that is quite spicy as it is, and got that beautiful flavour already. But then, yeah, we'll come back. We'll come back to you with the cooking of that tomorrow. So, stuff's looking pretty good. Look at that. So hardly any liquid left in there. We're, we're apples. Get the blender. So got my thermo. I'll take the, I'll take the, um, the bay leaves out. I don't want them blending up. One, two. So we're trying to remember how many you put in. Put the rest of that goodness in there. I like to give it a bit of a blend while it's hot because I think it blends up really well. 
But I'm not gonna add my emulsifying oil until it cools down a bit, but not a lot, but it cools down a lot once you're actually blending. So I'll get a bit of blending going, we'll have a look and a bit of a taste. Okay, so that's what it's looking like. <coughs> Woo! Don't smell it. Hot <coughs> vinegary mess. I can't even show you, I don't think. Anyway, let's try. Wow! Okay, Woo! Oh. <sighs> we're gonna get a glass of milk, because that's really hot. All that's, okay, all, all that's left now is to just do a bit of emulsifying. So I've got some olive oil in the jug. Start this going and just a slow, slow stream in. That's what you call peri peri sauce. Okay, so I'm going to scrap down the sides, do a bit of tweaking, let's have a go. Over. It's definitely mellowed down there, it's got the oil in and stuff, and plus my mouth's coated in milk, so a bit better. I'm going to scrap down the sides, and that's essentially done. Okay, so day two. It's been marinating lovely the chicken. So all we're gonna do is just grab it in. I'll put on some grease proof. Just gonna save me on the wash my trays, you don't need that. And this is gonna go in an oven. Spread these out so they have a bit of a bit of love. So when they look on a tray, I'll show you in a second. Um, and as I say, just giving these a light cook. So I'm actually gonna cook these for um, I'm gonna cook these for about two hours on 130 degrees in a in a, in a combi oven just so they really just uh it'll be fully cooked i'd say but then just uh just lovely all right fully cooked but still succulent all right uh, very important because i'm in a barbecue today got a bag of limes here about to go make caprioscas if you haven't had a caprioscas mm, make a caprioscas anyway what my trays look like quite spread out chicken here we go got two of them they're going in the oven as i said i'm going to put them in for about two hours at 130 they will be just about cooked all the way through but only just because they're still going to get a barbecue in with our amazing sauce based in right, this. here we go per peri peri based here we go get in there son slappy 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 that's what we want all right and then this is what i was told you all about lauren's legs hello lauren's legs uh it's the post box barbecue which is you know ingenuity at its finest you know it was a post box it's now a barbecue hence the name peeps all right yeah we're gonna get cooking on there so all you want to do is get your perinay sauce or peri peri sauce I think copyright infringes, he stopped me from calling it Perinose. Uh, I mean, just slap it all over here, then we're just gonna char grill it up for about 10 minutes. I'll get back to you when I'm charging. Right. So it's cooking time. You have to ignore Lawrence talking like in the background. Like, you know, so we've got the grill. Like wax or like that. Uh, and we're just gonna put this on the old post box grill. Sort of perfect heat just to sort of give it a bit of char. We're just getting the flavor on. I don't really give a shit too much about cooking because I'm not gonna lie to you here. I got drunk this afternoon and I've overcooked the chicken to start with. So in the, your world of whatever the fuck world you're living in, virtual world, um, you're not going to see how dry this is, but it's a bit drier than I'd like. I'm not going to lie. And now you can't see bugger. Oh, no, no, you got it. You got it. So there we go. So just, this is imparting char onto it. That's all I give a shit about. Excuse the language of kids are watching. And char grill this for a while. I'm just going to show you a photo when it's charred. Otherwise, I'm going to swear to you for the next 10 minutes and no one's going to want that. All right, cool. Here we are, peeps. All right, so we've basted the other side. I'll have a look. There you go. 
You can go further, but I mean, I've got double the amount to do, so the second batch might get a little bit better cooked, but I, I've just got to rush through this because that, that's my nature. Um, that looks like, look at that. So keep doing that. You see it's falling apart. Oh, there's a bit of skin. Don't lose the skin down there. Never lose the skin. Here we go. Uh, turnsy, turnsies. There we go. Sharky, sharky. Um, I'm not going to say I'm not going to give that another baste. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's edible right now. But I think we could probably put some more in there. Who knows? Anyway, it's going to be a mystery to everyone. See you soon.